My name is Purity Njeri Maina. I spent majority of my childhood in Embu. So I grew up around trees, farms, neighbors who actually care. Like my neighbor used to beat me when I do something wrong and then my mom would come and beat me later on. But yeah, it was a very communal place to grow up in. So my mother is very open-minded. So after high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, to be honest. So I just told her I have no idea what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do. <laughs> So what she did is she said, I'm giving you three months, think about it. And then she said, I will give you pocket money for you to go to universities and ask them all the questions that you feel like you need to know prior to deciding what you're going to do the rest of your life. So I went to USIU, United States International University, where um, I met someone called Don and he took me through um, software engineering. It's called, the course itself is called computer science and then he encouraged me to have a look at IST. So IST is Informed Information Systems Technology and they're going to give me a focus on things like creating mobile apps, creating web apps and I was like, oh, I'm going to be creating stuff and it's actually really cool and he was like, oh, we also teach you how to code, you're going to learn how to code and that's the science. So I loved it. Um, so I took up computer science. I studied it for three years. I graduated with a cool out first class, woohoo. Um, and then so I decided to become a full-time software engineer and then when I started writing code when I was in uni I realized I'm good with back-end languages so that's your Python, your Django, your database and servers more than I was with design so I chose to focus on that. Most of the companies I worked with I was their first female software engineer so I feel like most of the bosses tried to struggle. They struggled in finding my right fit. So they were wondering, can we give her like the easy tasks so that she can get them done faster? Like what do we need to help her with? So I found that I need to speak up for myself a lot, not because there is discrimination, but just because it's very new to them and they don't know what to do about it. So I needed my voice to be heard for guidance purposes. And so in due time I learned to say, no, I don't want to draw sketches. No, I don't want to do design. That's great, but that's not what I want to do. I want to look into servers. I want to see the security systems. I want to see our vulnerabilities in terms of being hacked. And that's what I want to do. Yeah, but then I had to fight for that. <laughs> Currently, my job title is head of tech. I work with a company called Redbud. I work part-time with Akira Chicks. Um, Akira Chicks is a learning institution. It's a non-profit organization, I should start by saying that. So what happens is that they take girls from marginalized communities and then we mass them in this learning program for an year. And then they get industry leaders in their fields, like in software engineering, back-end, front-end, design, design thinking and then they expose the students to all that learning and then the students in due time get to choose the courses that they like and then they focus on that course. Like I feel like I owe, I owe society to teach the next people what to do because sometimes it's a bit sad that in my six years I've only worked with one woman and she, we worked with, we worked with her for three months and then we dropped off. So I usually feel very sad that all the meetings I go to, um, the teams that I lead, um, I lead an all-men team I walk into a boardroom, the people I talk to from other companies, if you're doing an integration with them, then it's all men. So I always feel like I owe it to other young girls to tell them that tech is a journey that they can take, that tech is, look, we're doing it, it's fine, don't be scared, take it, learn about coding and just do it. So when I come to school, I feel like at least I'm making a milestone in making sure that at least five years from now, when you go into a boardroom and people are talking about tech, that there's more than one woman sitting at the table. My hope in let's say 15 or 20 years would be that I will be working with governments and corporates that have a huge reach in Africa to just advise them on what can be done. I hope that in 20 years I can leverage my skills working with startups in Kenya and in Africa, I should say in Africa because Redbud has given me the opportunity to work in Ghana so I can say in Africa. So I hope in 20 years that my skill set can be used to advise governments around things like data policies, privacy that um, should be there in countries when it comes to data and how to protect young kids on the internet. Just advise people who have the power to reach to a bigger audience on how tech should be handled or carried out or policies that should be put in place.